I really love the comment sections of my videos. So the other day, user Zenon, lots of zero and a one, posted a comment saying how much he liked his magic desktop. But would I cover the Chaos Desktop as part of my Battle of the Desktop series? Because he used to use it years ago. Now, this isn't really that video. So we have, on the one hand, Chaos Desktop that he mentioned, and Chaos Toss that I'd never even heard of. So two things I didn't really know about, which led to a really interesting dive down a rabbit hole. And this video is the result of that. So today we're going to cover Chaos Desktop, Chaos Toss, and see what we get. And I'm going that way. I will talk to you later. Right, so let's start with Chaos Toss. Now, Chaos Toss was a replacement for Atari's Toss operating system. Well, actually, it was Atari's operating system with loads of patches applied to it to fix various defects and limitations and also to improve performance in some areas. The OS could be burned to ROM or loaded at boot time from a disk via a bootstrap utility. Chaos also came with some custom resources that changed the look and feel of the Gem desktop with some stylish icons. But that's not the Chaos desktop. We'll get onto that later. Chaos Toss was branched from Atari's Toss 1.04. So let's have a look at the desktop. Okay, nice icons. We even have a little cat hiding behind the trash can. At least I hope it's a cat and not a rat. We also have a cycle window button. That's a welcome addition to the UI. I want to have a quick peek at the About box. Now, this is interesting. There are two things of note here. The 68040 badge is a reference to one of the reasons that Chaos Toss came into being. It allowed Toss 1.4 to be reliably run on processors that were not just stock 68,000 machines. So people with accelerator cards could have a more reliable experience. Now let's have a look at the authors. The authors are listed as, and I apologize when I muller these names, but Dirk Katsky and Andreas Krompke. One thing to note here is that Andreas would go on to produce the famous magic multitasking operating system and desktop replacement that Xenon, lots of zeros and a one, was talking about in his comment. Now, Chaos and Chaos Desktop were him effectively cutting his teeth. And it's really interesting to come across the evolution of things as time goes by. Looking back from where we are now to the end state of the Atari and its software, it, it's not easy to get a feel for how things actually got to that end state. So by looking at things like this, you just get a feeling for the evolution of technology as time goes by. And that's just brilliant as far as I'm concerned. I mentioned that Chaos Toss contained bug fixes and some new features. I also mentioned that some of the modifications improved performance. So how did it perform? Hey, it's benchmark time. So this graph is showing gem bench scores for all the Toss version one ROM versions. Gosh, version one, ROM versions. Yeah, great one, Dave. Chaos is faster than the original Atari version in all cases, except for VDI graphics where, and I don't know why, TOS 1 is better. Perhaps there are less VDI calls? I have no idea. However, in Gem Dialog Box and Gem Window Tests, Chaos was way faster than the originals. I mean, these improvements to windowing functions led to Chaos feeling snappier and more pleasant to use than stock TOS. What about the operating systems that came out after Chaos? How does Chaos stack up against that? Well, when benchmarking it against TOS 206, Chaos matches or outperforms it in all areas. And I found that a little surprising. You would have thought that, well, Atari would have put some effort into making things faster, but presumably not. So what about the ultra modern TOS variants? Comparing it to Emutos 1.2.1, Emutos outperforms Chaos in almost all areas, though Toss still wins in the window and dialog box tests. That is how it should be, right? Active modern developments should be making things better. So let's have a look at the Chaos Desktop running on Chaos Toss. Installing Chaos Desktop is a simple matter of copying files from the floppy drive onto the C drive and adding the auto folder files from drive A into the auto file folder in drive C. So let's reboot. And as part of the boot process, we see that the chaos shell manager is up and running. So post reboot, I realized I had forgotten to set chaos desk to run automatically. So let's set that up and save the desktop. So chaos toss remembers that it needs to auto start and we'll pop in a cheeky reboot and then we should go straight into chaos desk. Nice. Now I'm going to quickly rearrange my desktop icons. There's no need for you to see all of that, so I'm just going to jump to the end. 
And now for a mini Battle of the Desktop style review of Chaos Desk. First thing I want to have a look at is actually the memory consumption. So opening sysinfo, we see that we have nearly three megs free out of four megs of memory. So as a replacement desktop, it's not a memory hook. So that's a good thing. Let's start with a quick look at the basic layout of the desktop. So it's got pretty icons, which we like. Although the cat's gone from the trash can, which is kind of a pity. And I like that while the window shows a scroll bar at the bottom there, the content does not need to be scrolled. It reacts to the size of the window dynamically. I guess the leftover scroll bar is a facet of TOS 1.4 that couldn't be overridden. Now, usually we check for the toolbars and right click menus, which aren't present in this desktop, but there is a cycle window button, which kind of is always a good positive thing. So you can install applications on the desktop for later use, which is a real plus. Also, when you're selecting stuff, you aren't limited to dragging top left to bottom right. Rubber banding works in all directions. Again, just a simple ease of use change that makes your life better. But that's it for the desktop kind of. So let's do what we usually do at this point and let's hit the menus. Get info on a drive returns the usual disk information, but it has to be said it does it really quickly, which is a good thing. The rest of the file menu is your traditional toss fare. So let's go onto the display menu and we have as icon, as text, some pre canned text sizes and what attributes you want to display, etc. And at this point, usually I swap to text mode and see if each window has its own view or if all windows share a single view. And unfortunately, it's a global single view, which is a down check for this desktop. Now, I always like to see how the window responds to multiple columns of text. So I'm going to cut the number of visible attributes down to just size. That way we're guaranteed mul multiple columns. What I'm always interested in seeing is if as the window expands, the number of columns not only react to the available space, but the window only shows an extra column when there is enough space to show the entire line. I don't like it when you get a partial line. I, I think it was the Ease desktop used to add the second column when all you could see was sort of one or two characters. It was pointless. So I don't want to see any clipping of the text by the sort of right window edge. And here, Chaos Desk reacts implacably. So we have the option to select the font size of 10, 9 or 8 points or pixels. I have no idea. And even at size 8, this is really readable. If we squish along a little bit here, I, I can actually get three columns quite easily. So you can display a lot of files in your window. But for now, to save your eyes, we're going to go back to 10. In the sort menu, we can sort by the usual suspects. So let's try size. And there we have the largest file at the top. And finally, we can set a mask. So let's try star.inf. And here we are. We can only see the inf file, so that works nice. And we can reset the mask to star.star .star without having to type. The final menu available to us is options. We can install a drive or device and set the icon for it. We can easily remove one. And as you can see, I've, or rather can't see, I guess, is I've removed drive B from the desktop because I never use it. If we have a quick look at options, usually at this point, I go over them at a fair clip and say, you can pause the video at any point to allow yourself to see what options are available. Well, <laughs> there's kind of no need to do that here because there really aren't many of them. Now, install application allows you to associate applications with file extensions. But note here, you can only associate two extensions with a single application. Now, that's going to suck for apps like editors where you, you might want to associate tons of file types with them. So eh, that's a downside. Although, as we'll see a little bit later, you can actually specify a, a global editor and let the desktop take care of the extensions, I guess. Set environment allows us to create environment variables, a subject that I've covered in other videos. Programs allows us to associate applications with hotkeys and system functions, like the editor, which I just talked about a sentence ago. Strangely, there's no file selector on this dialog, so it's typey typey to enter the path to the app. Now, that's not ideal. However, no command is interesting as the chaos distribution comes with a simple CLI. But I'm, I'm going to say that's kind of beyond the scope of this video, so I'll skip that for now. And if people are interested, we can always come back to it in a later video. And that's all she wrote for menus. Now, usually at this point, I ask the question, can we edit icons and icon files associations? There's no mention of it on this menu, but I'm really into editing icons. And if you look at the option menu, it's just not there, but you can do it. It's through an application that we're going to have a quick look at next. Now, the icon editor is in the not so surprisingly named icons folder. 
Now to make this a little easier to explain, I've moved over to multi-column text mode and eight point font. So I hope this doesn't make it too difficult to see, but we want to talk about the files in this folder. So there are a couple of tools and special files in this folder that are important. There's the icon editor itself, the make icons.tos command line utility, and that packages the icons and their file associations up. And then there's the names.txt file that associates icons with applications and file extensions. Finally, in this folder, there are a series of files, normally in pairs, but not always, that contain the icons for applications and their associated file types. So files with an ICP extension are the icons for programs, and files with the ICD extension are for the files those programs consume. Data, I guess, for the D in this case. So here we have the arc.icp icon for archivers. So that's programs like LHARC, Zoo, etc. And the arc.icd for archive files. So again, that's like your .zoo, your .zip, your .lha, that sort of thing. So let's have a quick look into the names.txt file. Here we have the arc data file definition for the extension star.arc. Now there's only one, but there could be several, star.zoo, zip, lhark, as we've mentioned previously. And here we have the program file for arc files. So we've got arc shell 21, the arc and zoo applications. So icon creation is done via the icon editor. Now, as you can see, it's a very basic tool. You start with a new icon template that contains the application and data icons. You edit your icons through the medium of clicking. There's no copy paste mask options or anything like that. It's all very basic. You then save the files out. Then you add the association to your names.txt file, and then you're set up. So once you've created and associated your icons to apps and data, you run the make icons toss command. That produces a file called chaosdesk.icn, which you then copy into the folder you installed chaos desktop into, reboot, and your changes will be picked up. So it's pretty basic, but it's functional. Hello, I'm back. Right, what have we learned today? We've learned that there's a lot of noise outside this house. We've learned that Chaos Toss was an absolutely brilliant uh, addition to the Toss lineup, that it fixed loads of defects, gave you better performance. And if I had, as I do actually have, a <laughs> physical pair of Atari STs, it's definitely a prime candidate for inclusion in one of my two ROM slots that I use as my ROM switcher. Very, very good product. Chaos Desktop, on the other hand, not so much. I think that it was good in and of its time. However, it was eclipsed by desktops such as NeoDesk and Genie that came after it. So good to know it from a point of view of history and it's great to see that evolution that led up to magic and the magic operating system but in the battle of the desktops unfortunately just an also run however that's all for today so thanks for watching and i hope to talk to you soon bye now